Hey guys, welcome back to BA Adventures. Hi. So today we are back at Silver Dollar City and... We're gonna answer the question, is the Fart Harvest Festival worth it? So come with us. Hey guys, I wanted to interrupt the video to let you guys know that it is sponsored today by Frost Buddy. Okay, Frost Buddy is a company that specializes in keeping your drinks cold. So this here, and what Ash has there in her hand is a universal Frost Buddy. So Ash, what do these things do? All right, you got a 12 ounce can, regular um, cans of soda, essentially. You have the taller cans that are 12 ounce, you have 12 ounce glass bottles, mm -hmm. and for the last, you got the 16 ounce tall cans as well, all in mm -hmm. one. All holds into this, and what happens is, you can even take this off, you can take the insert out of it, which is like that, and it holds, that's how you put the 16 ounce can in there. But wait, there's more. You can put a lid on this and drink out of it yourself, and it even has a straw insert there for you to drink out of. The, the drink, and the, the straw, and the lid are sold separately. So with that, hit the link in the description box below to get yours today. It really helps us out, bring quality content to you guys. All right, let's get back to the video and let's get back inside the park. All right, so immediately as you enter the park, you are greeted with a bunch of pumpkins everywhere, people, and this massive pumpkin tree, which Ash and I are gonna take a photo in front of. And so today, the things that we're going to discuss are just the amount of crowds, the decorations, the food, and just some different special things that they've got going on here with the Harvest Festival. So this should be able to answer some of your guys' questions on is this worth it? And then at the end, we will let you guys know. Is it? Is it worth it? Is it? Is the answer yes? Is it no? Is it maybe? Is it this? We will find out. So anyway, first place that we are going to go is we will uh, head off this direction to go show you one of these special... Uh, decorations or things that they have here during the Harvest Festival and it is 2023 you can still search for Red Flanders pants as it is the last season for the original fire in the hole. Anyway off to show you that way to see a special decoration that they have for this festival. All right guys so we've made it inside the square area and along with Harvest Festival is the crafting going on. Um, there are booths set up from all over in which you can do some early Christmas shopping if you want to. We have found some very unique, fun things in here from the crafters and they are all handmade. So they're pretty cool things to get for Christmas. So another neat concept they have is they have a horse here that uh, will walk in a circle and put it into this press right here and it makes molasses out of the sugar cane that is laying there on the ground. This is how they used to make it. As you can see the horse has made its uh, way around uh, this a few times and they are using it to the same specs that they would in 1880s. So. I believe this is a feature that they had at Dollywood as well. They, yeah, so Ash said that this is a feature that they have at Dollywood also. So if you guys go there at some point, you could also see the yeah. same thing. Well, they used to. They used to? Yes. Oh, they used to. Okay, yeah. I apologize. Mm -hmm. So they used to have it. Uh, maybe it'll make a return. Never know. So anyway, we are going to start going this way and start heading down the hill. Uh, that direction down the hill and head over towards Wilson's farm Yes. and go see something that they have that is unique to this festival. So see you guys when we get to Wilson's farm. So we have made it to Wilson Farms also known as Hoodow Hollow during the harvest festival. This is an area that Ash and I do not get back to very often. Um, she likes the barn swing I don't like the barn swing and neither of us like Outlaw Run, which is all the way at the end of Wilson's farm or Wilson Farms. Um, but anyway, this area is decorated very nicely. You've got some jack-o'-lantern owls up above and you got some jack-o'-lanterns kind of all over the place. But the one 
amazing exclusive thing that they've got here is the Garden of Giants. And the Silver Dollar line is going strong today. But you've got several different pumpkins here. So um, you've got Great Scott maxing out at 1,356 pounds. And then you've got Duncan the Pumpkin, the envy of the patch, at 1,586 pounds. This thing is huge. And these are all like real pumpkins, which is absolutely incredible at how big these things can get. They can make a lot of pumpkin pies. And then you've got Edgar Allan Plumpkin at a magnificent 1178 pounds. And then right here is Tubby Thomas weighing in at 1042 pounds. Also asked not to touch it, but there are some uh, there is another pumpkin down here which is called Sasquatch weighing in at 1,477 pounds. This is incredible how large these pumpkins can get. So anyway, so we are going to uh, go to a different location on um, something else that's exclusive that also deals with pumpkins here in a little bit. And uh, it is in the Grand Exposition, which is back that way. So we will see you guys in a little bit. All right, so on the way to the Grand Exposition, I wanted to show you guys these bats that are hanging from the riverfront and uh, how cool that decoration is. It's very unique. They also light up. It also looks like at one point they used to be able to like spin, but I could be wrong. And then they've got these cool little like pumpkin teepee looking things which is really really cool so um, anyway we're gonna head to the Grand Exposition now so another fun thing just on the outside of the Grand Exposition is uh, Foggy Hollow in the Pumpkin Plaza and as you can see it opens at 530 and it goes down through this section here which is going to be, I feel like, one of the future ways to get into uh, the new fire in the hole. Uh, but these lights, these string lights, they turn on at night and then they have fog machines set up all the way down through the edges of this uh, walkway. And it is really neat. And I'm gonna give you guys a little cutaway here of that video that we had. Uh, from I think our last visit, maybe two visits ago, not 100%, it was two visits ago. Two visits ago to the park of this. So this is old, but it is still from this year. Um, that being said, uh, there's also some more decorations over here and plenty of photo opportunities. Uh, you can be a family of jack-o'-lanterns right there. You just stick your head out on that one. Then they've also got these little jack-o'-lantern guys from last year. You've got the blacksmith, the time traveler, the blown glass guy, the potter, and the baker. So anyway, um, we're going to keep heading this direction to the Grand Exposition and show you more decorations as the way goes. And the boatwork theater is popping so if you're here uh get in there listen to those guys they sound really good we'll have to see those guys some other time who is that the spoken for quartet they sound really great so anyway heading to the grand exposition now some more pumpkins and decorations they have here all of these pumpkins that you see carved over here in this area and some throughout the park are carved by a master carver by the name of Barry Brown who his show is coming later and we will show you guys that later so please stick around for that we'll watch him carve a pumpkin um, that is one of the other things we are going to show you to see if it is worth coming to uh, there is also this little pumpkin house 
over here just outside of where he does his pumpkin carving area um, it will be right here uh, we will come watch this this afternoon at two o'clock we've got that planned as well as another show that is specific to this but all of these things are just absolutely beautiful and this this is a cool little scene right here as well but anyway uh, Grand Exposition is this way and uh, there's even a really neat decoration as well a massive pumpkin scarecrow that you can see here through the trees and coming up to him it's a little bit different angle than what you're used to something that has been seen as very iconic to this park as well during this festival so anyway we're gonna get into the Grand Exposition. It is actually right over there. So we will see you when we get there. So we have made it into the Grand Exposition area. And it is decorated all into pumpkin stuff. So if this is something that you guys are really interested in seeing, it looks fantastic at night. But we wanted to show you guys the stuff in the daylight so that you can see it and come to it and see where it's at. So you see things better in the light but you've got these bats here with blue lights on it you've got some spiders up here hanging from the sky on this spider web and then one of the more iconic things which is also a thing at dollywood is this giant pumpkin um spider so anyway they even have an owl over there, and there is even a cat up here around the corner. So it is uh, really, really cool, the decorations here. And honestly, if you are coming to look at pumpkin decorations and the decorations and stuff like that, I would say, as well as Ash, that it is worth it the trip to Silver Dollar City Harvest Festival if that is all you're interested in. Um, I'm going to keep walking over this direction and we will head to the Pumpkin Plaza area. So to add on to part of the Pumpkins in the City Harvest Festival, this section is the Pumpkin Plaza which I discussed earlier. It opens at 530 and starts a dance party on the inside of here. It's great for the end of the day. And it's even got some uh, food places that you can eat in there. Uh-oh, it looks like one of the little inflatable guys has fallen over. But this is a little look on the inside of there. I can't really peek through the holes because I don't want to get kicked out of Silver Dollar City. So, <laughs> can't do that. But anyway, so that is uh, basically all of the decorations and the fun stuff. Okay, so apologies for just kind of cutting that off right there. Um, had a little technology issue going on, but it happens. Anyway, um, like I was saying and talking about the food for the uh, Harvest Festival, it is Ashley's favorite. They do a fantastic job at Silver Dollar City, and the tasting passport is one of the best things you can do. I agree. It... Um, it is actually really good some of the items and it's not they like to put a lot of pumpkin in there but there are options on there that if you are just not a pumpkin fan they have it for you um she likes to say she's not a pumpkin fan but then she orders everything pumpkin whenever we get it and then it's like it's yours i'm like no it's not i try <laughs> i try to like it i feel but, like it's an acquired taste you just keep shoving it down and you see if you like it or not and you... yeah i agree but anyway, like uh, like I was saying, we are going to head over to a couple things today uh, that are also specific to the Harvest Festival that we uh, haven't experienced yet. One of those being the Cowboy Camp, which is a cook-off between two truck wagon cookies. Cookers. Cookies? Cooks. They do call them cookies. Do they call them Sometimes, cookies? yeah. Weird. Not sure about um, that one. So anyway, we're going to go over there and uh, see what that's all about and see which one wins. And then there's also the Master Carver, 
that I mentioned earlier in the video about uh, watching him do his work and uh, everything. So that being said, uh, the cooking thing starts in 25 minutes. So we aren't too far away. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump that way. <laughs> a stone's throw, as I would say. So anyway, I'm going to head over there and uh, see the cowboy cook-off. So see you guys over there. All right, we have made it to the Horsepin Ranch Chuck Wagon from southeastern Oklahoma, as well as Starby Creek Chuck Wagon from Conway, Missouri. Looks like those are the two that are facing off today. As the Huck Finn adventure goes off in the background. As one does. <laughs> as one does. So anyway. We will see you guys whenever the cooking gets started. And y'all come by here, whether you're just sitting in the shade and find a place to sit, or, or maybe the outlaw run line's too long for you, it all look like a bunch of roller coaster riders. <laughs> so what we're going to do to start off with, before I get into talking about truck wagon and cowboys, we're going to make some coffee. And uh, the coffee making is really pretty simple. And, uh, but when you make cowboy coffee or campfire coffee it's a different little different way than you're used to in your bun or your mixer coffee you make it with more than water and that tends to bring out the flavor a lot better in your coffee the, the uh, hot water in your bun is not nearly as hot as boiling water um, i've got some more i've got some boiling water up here and we'll get started Uh, 
first one here today. All right, so we just finished up with cowboy camp, and I made a small like misjudgment. Apparently, the competition is at three o'clock and they are going against ham and with ham and beans against one another mm -hmm. and one of the actors from the movie Gunsmoke is actually here if you older uh, generation people know what Gunsmoke is I know what Gunsmoke is well a lot of people watched it it came out it was like new and so old generation of <laughs> I will tell you now that I, if I taught some of the kids at school they would not know what Gunsmoke is so <laughs> Uh, anyway, that being said, it happens back there behind us. Uh, that's the location of it. And uh, they do ham and beans is the competition today. According to uh, the presenter that you guys saw, they did beans and ham yesterday. So <laughs> You have to switch it up. You have to switch it up, be innovative. So Anyway, we are going to go see Barry Brown and his pumpkin carving. And Oh, we also got to try some foods, though. Oh, yes, we did try some foods. Um, I had some... Cowboy, uh, coffee. cowboy coffee. It wasn't it was, bad. I would it need was some strong. creamer. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, um, it was actually pretty good. Not gonna lie, I was impressed with. It. And then Ash had the um, peach cobbler, yep. and it was like those peaches were like fresh. Now, like I didn't care too much for the crust because it was a little hard for me, but mm -hmm. those peaches were divine. 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 They were divine. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, now to continue back to what I was saying, <laughs> they uh, they make some pretty good food and they even give you some information on the um, history of the chuck wagon and some cowboy history as well. Um, it, it's, it's very awesome. Uh, the people were from Conway, Missouri and the f other wagon, one. oh the other one was from southeastern mm -hmm. Oklahoma, uh, from Podo is what he said. I've never uh, not, heard of that never, place. <laughs> I'm not sure where that's at, but they also talked about where their wagons were made. Oh, yeah. Um, the Oklahoma guy's wagon was made in uh, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And the people from Conway, when he was the guy that you saw talk, stand by for train. <laughs> there it goes. And anyway. <laughs> um, the people from Conway, their wagon was made in Springfield, Missouri. So I think it's cool that they are from Conway, Missouri, and also use in the hall, and also use a wagon from Missouri. So anyway, yep. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to head up back by the Grand Exposition to Barry Brown and watch him carve some magic into a pumpkin. Magic. Magic. Very excited. Yes, very excited. And I think that's going to be our last stop for the day. So anyway, stay tuned for that, and uh, we will see you there and see you after, and then decide, is the Harvest Festival worth it? See you at Barry Brown's presentation. That's amazing. So I hope I give you a good show. If it's not interesting, it's short. So you can move on to getting on those roller coasters, okay? Well, here we go. My name is Barry Brown. I'm from Denver, Colorado. When I was a little kid, I came from a tiny little town north of Denver, this little spooky place called Erie, Colorado. It happened to be surrounded by pumpkin fields, so make, make of that what you will. Uh, when, I, when I went to college, I went to Greeley, northern Colorado. I graduated with a degree in voice and theater. So naturally, I'm a pumpkin carver. Yeah. I did go down to Denver and start doing shows. My second professional show out of the gate, I earned $10 a show. Watch out world. <laughs> so I was looking for something extra to do, you might imagine. I came into a grocery store and I saw the first ever pumpkin carving kit. There never had been one before, little saws and drills and patterns. That was very exciting to me because all I ever had to carve with before was my mom's paring knife, you know, that she peeled potatoes with. So those little tools I was excited about. But was, what was really exciting was they had a contest. You could win $1,000 if you got national grand prize. That's a lot of shows. So I figured I'd enter the contest. I, took a, I, I carved a pumpkin, took a picture of it, sent it into the contest, and I won a prize and learned that the pumpkin carving kit came from Denver, Colorado. I never would have guessed my own hometown. Well, the next year I got a job as an entertainer on a cruise ship. Anyone been on a cruise before? 
Oh, a lot of people. Did you bring your Yes, car? there it is. <laughs> Carve in your lap. That's the first secret. Carve in your lap. Would you guys say that with me? Carve in your lap. That's the first secret. It always makes me nervous to watch somebody chase a rolly thing around a table with a knife in their hands. <laughs> yeah. So this is the safest way to carve pumpkins. And that's the whole reason that pumpkin carving was in, or the pumpkin carving kits were invented in the first place, to be more safe about carving pumpkins. So if you carve it in your lap, it's not going to roll around anywhere. You control what the pumpkin does. That is the safest way to do it. Now, when you guys open up your pumpkins, how do you do it? You find it, OK. Oh, you do? That's another secret. I carve my pumpkins, I open them up from the bottom. If the stem is still green and thick, that means it's still giving life to the pumpkin. I think that help the, helps the pumpkin last a little longer. And I just like the look of it when it doesn't have that cut on the top. I can put my artwork anywhere on the pumpkin. So I open the pumpkin from the bottom. When I'm carving in my lap, I saw around the half of the circle, and then I cut that piece out like I'm drawing a capital D. Yeah? Like that. Then I push that piece in. Then I carve around the rest of the circle, and I pull that piece out. If you can imagine if I carved around the whole thing and pushed it in and then tried to get that piece out with my hand, I think I'd be a monkey punky and get my hand stuck in there. So if you do that half and half method, your hand won't get stuck. When it comes to cleaning out your pumpkins, what do you guys use? You use a spoon? You just go with your hands? Oh my goodness, that's a gooey mess. What do you use? A knife to go clean out your pumpkins? Well, this is the tool that I use. It's called a scraper scoop. And these tools that I'm showing you are the ones I have over, over there in my booth. They're not available in stores. They're made in the USA. Nice and strong, sturdy stuff. It's not going to break. I'll tell you about the saws in a minute because they're special. But this scraper scoop is great. It's based off an old ice cream scoop. We shorten the handle and flatten the top so it fits all the way inside the pumpkin and I can really scrape in there. This pumpkin only took me 47 seconds to clean out. And then it's super clean on the inside. I think that's important to get all the strings out because those strings decompose really quickly. And if you leave them in the pumpkin, or if there's some left in the pumpkin, I think that makes the pumpkin decompose really quickly. And that's not the direction we're trying to go. We're trying to let the pumpkin last as long as possible. That little light of yours, I love to see it shine. Everybody, that little light of yours, I love to see it shine. That little light, be adventurous. I love to see it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So my little punkies, that's the secret of pumpkin carving, the light shining in the darkness. If you have any questions, I'll be back in my booth. And if not, I'll see you on Time Traveler, OK? Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. OK, so how was that? I thought it was really neat. I did, I love this message, and I really want to carve a pumpkin now. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We might. But anyway, so now it is time to answer the question, is the fall harvest worth it? When it comes to decorations? Yeah. Yep. Food? Absolutely. The shows. Yeah, I yeah. liked them. Mm -hmm. The <laughs> cowboy camp was really cool. Mm -hmm. And the message that he gave us with the pumpkins was phenomenal. I'm in the like fall mood now. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> the temperature is like definitely fall season. If you guys didn't notice, we were wearing long sleeves, jackets, and hoodies <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah. Sweater weather. It's sweater weather. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, that being said, guys, uh, if you guys want to keep up with any more of our theme park videos, news, and adventures, hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so that you guys don't miss any more of our theme park adventures. And with that, I'm Barry Brown, Master Pumpkin Carver. Bring on the next adventure. <laughs>